Some of y'all fired up this morning? Woo! Fired up this morning. I want to hear the people who broke some chains off you this morning. Look, uh, if you get it, you, it's called unplugging yourself. Learning how to unplug yourself to the enemy. He's, he's no longer going to keep you in those traps, in that room that you've been in thinking that you're not, uh, amount, uh, you won't amount to anything. You're not worthy of anything. God says you are worthy, and I want you to understand. I want everybody to turn into the books of Ecclesiastes. We're going uh, to Ecclesiastes 3. And I want you to understand this word this morning. Look, uh, Ecclesiastes 3, the first thing it says is there is a time for everything. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven. Did y'all hear that? We can go home on that alone. It says there is a time for everything. Did y'all know that there is a time for everything in your life? Yes. Mm -hmm. There is a season for every activity under heaven. Look, I want you to get this this morning. There was a time in, in our lives when me and the family, we went to, um, we went to Disney. Disney World. Y'all understand Disney World? That's in Florida. Not the California one, but the Florida one. We went to Disney World. We were proud. We were proud families. We, we, we went to Disney World and uh, the first thing we did was get off. And how many people remember know the Mickey hats? Yeah. Some of y'all, you know, men, y'all know the Mickey hats too because y'all will wear them. I'm not the only one who wore a Mickey hat. Am I? Alright, so so we went to Disney World and we were excited because it was our first time going there. First time at Disney World, first time seeing Mickey and all of them, taking pictures with all of them. I had pictures with all of them. Um, but the, the first thing we experienced when we got there was there was a gentleman who told us, he said, he said, look, I want you to understand something. He said, this is your first time out? I said, yes, yeah, our first time out. You see how excited I am? I'm ready to go see Mickey. <laughs> And so uh, I told, uh, he told us, he said, okay, this is your first time out. I said, yeah. He said, tell us, tell us some stuff about it. Oh, you'll have fun. You'll enjoy yourselves. He said, but it will rain at 145. Okay. We were like, whatever. What do you mean it's going to rain at 145? Who are you? You Mr. Confucius? Do you know everything? But he said, it's going to rain at 145. He said, just everything else will be great, but it's going to rain at 145. We were like, why is he saying that to us? And so we go out and we get on the rides and everything. You know, I'm not the ride guy. I used to be the ride guy, but I'm not the ride guy right now. I'm not the roller coaster guy. Before I can get on them for days and days and days. Now I get on them and it takes off and I get sick. Anybody ever experienced that? It's called age. Anybody, anybody has some age up in here. You turn this way. I used to get spit on the merry-go-round. Y'all remember that? You spit on the Fall off, get in the dirt, have dirt in your mouth, get up. And then you come back, and you get back on the merry round. I get on it, and it turns, and I'm like, oh! My stomach gets sick. So I want, I want you to get this, what happened. So we go there, so we go there, and uh, we go there, and we experienced some fun. We had some joy. Can somebody come and get the kids up here? These two kids right here? Um, but we, we were enjoying ourselves on the rides, and about one... 30, we started seeing a bunch of people go into um, a place where you eat. I'm like, you know, why is everybody going in a place to eat? You know, we got, so it's more rides for us. You know, you know how the lines are at Disney World. How many people know how the lines are? The lines are crazy. If you've been to Six Flags here, then you understand it's twice that much as, as Disney World. And so we went there where, where people are cutting, getting out of the lines and going into this place, this lunch place. And I'm like, why are they going into the lunch place? And so um, I'm trying to figure out what's going on, and, and it got to 135, and we started looking up, and I was like, man, you know, there's a cloud coming up. Where's it? I mean, it was sunny. It was sunny before, now there's a cloud coming up. And I'm like, okay, so there's a cloud creeping up on us. Um, but we still kept riding the rides, and kept having fun. Around 140, the cloud was right over us. And we're like, wait, no, 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 no. And no, no way. There's no way that guy could know. No, 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 no. My, my, my wife remembers it. I mean, and then, then at 143, people are crowding into this place, crowding into this place. I kid you not, at 145, boom, 
Water came down, hit us. We were all like, what's getting wet? And we like the only people out there like, oh, let's get into that place they were all going into. <laughs> See, those were the familiar folks who lived in Florida probably. And they knew what was going to happen. We didn't know what was going to happen. So we like dummies like getting the free rides and stepping up at the front. It's like, oh, we got the ride now. Let's get over there. I got the right. <laughs> Started raining on us. And so we finally decided to go into the same place. We're like, let's go on over where everybody else is. We got the, the kids in the stroller, and we roll up in the stroller and get into the, the place. And uh, now the problem there is now there's a line. Because everybody else before us got first dibs. All the tables were filled, and everybody's laughing, and we're here with kids all soaking wet at the end of the line. <laughs> like, what, what's going on? How did that guy know that it was going to rain? How did he know at 145 it was going to rain? How did he know that? Who is he to know this? And come to find out that it wasn't that he knew, it's that it rains every single day the same way in that season. Every single day at the same time it rains in Florida. Now that, that's, a, that's a different thing for San Antonio because it doesn't do that. The clouds will come over, the clouds will look like they're about to jump on you and nothing. Then the sun pops out and says, ha ha, fooled you. Y'all know that, y'all experience that. Well, it's not the same way in Florida. Every single day it rained at the same, same time. And then after that the sun popped back out. And we were like, wow, that was amazing. We thought that guy was a genius in knowing that, but we found out that it rains every single day the same way. And so I, 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 because we didn't listen, we were in the restaurant waiting in a long line for seats. And uh, anybody ever had a bad day before? Anybody, whoever's had a bad day, I want you to say amen. amen. People have had bad days before. And I want you to know this. Uh, uh, how a bad day is determined. I want you to write this down. A bad day is determined by the conditions you set for it yes. not being met. Did you know that? Yes. You set conditions for that day. If those conditions aren't met, that's a bad day. Let me show you an example because some of y'all look crazy about that. Uh, some of us base uh, our bad days or good days on accomplishments. Mm -hmm. If you get up in the morning and say, I got three things to accomplish and you accomplish none of them, guess what you're going to say at the end of the day? That's a bad day. It was a bad day. I couldn't get nothing accomplished. And women, isn't that how y'all work? Um, or you base it on emotions. You say, oh man, I'm not feeling well. It's not based on the weather. The weather could be raining or sunny, but your emotions, if you're saying I'm not feeling well, and at the end of the day you're not feeling well, guess what that was? That was a bad day. And some of us base it on weather. They say if it rains, it's a bad day. If it doesn't rain, it's a good day. Isn't that how we do it? So you fall in one of those categories. Some of you fall in all three of them. And so we're, we're trying to help you this morning. Your, your days are determined by the conditions you set for it. Now, isn't that funny? Because we set conditions on everything. And when we set conditions on everything, the, the things that we set conditions on, when those conditions are not met, you know what happens? It's a bad situation. Now, um, uh, I want you to understand this. You know, I want you to watch this. Well, write this down. Write this down. You don't determine the season, but you do determine the activity during the season. Anybody? Everybody writing that down? You don't determine the season. God determines all the seasons. But you do determine the activity in the season, during the season. Now look at this. I want to give you an example what we just talked about. Look, in Florida... I couldn't change the weather. It was going to rain whether I like it or not. You understand? I couldn't change that. However, I could have changed whether we got wet or not. Did you get that? I hope some of you get this. Mm -hmm. You can make a decision on whether you get wet or not. We could have listened to the man and went into the building and had some good seats and ate before everybody else ate and, and watched everybody get wet and said they must be new. They must be their first time out. You know, so, but we didn't do that. We didn't listen. And because we didn't listen, our activity was get wet, then go in. So I'm trying to help you this morning. You can determine, the, you can't determine the season, but you can determine the activity during the season. Now, uh, I want you to know this, I want you to know this, God has a time and a season for everything. I hope y'all understand that. God has a time and a season for everything. What you do can help you during that season. It can't change the season. Some of y'all think y'all season changers. Some of y'all trying to change seasons. Y'all trying to, when it's sunny, you want it to rain. When it's raining, you want it to be sunny. And so you spend most of your time trying to change seasons instead of changing your activity during the season. All right, so 
Um, this is the first thing it says. Verse 2 says this, a time to be born and a time to die. Now, uh, look, I want you to know that I was born December 22nd, 1989, <laughs> which makes me 23 years young. Y'all, what are y'all laughing at? I am 23 years young. All right. All right, so maybe I'm 24, 25, 26, or 27. Maybe I'm a little bit older than that. How many people believe I'm 23? You get food first. How many people? 23? Look at all the hands go up now. Like, oh, he's 23. He's 22 if he want to be 22. 18. 18. <laughs> Sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 16. You get to prepare the food. <laughs> so I was born around 1989, close to it. Uh, but here's what you need to know. The doctors may have said I was going to be born on the 23rd. The doctors may have said I've been born on Christmas. The doctors could have said I'm going to be born on the 18th. But it does not have any effect on what God says yes. as far as me being born. Do you understand that? Yes. yes. So the season God had for me, the plan that he had for me was to be born on the 22nd. Whether my mom wanted the 19th or the 20th, whether she wanted the 23rd or the 25th, whether the doctor said the 24th or the 25th, it did not matter what they said because right. God had a plan right. for me to right. be born on the 22nd right. of December. Do you get it? Yes. yes. So you got to understand a season, the definition of season is a period of time. Oh, I'm trying to help you this morning. Come on. A period of time, meaning there's a start and a finish to the season. Yes. And some of us... Because we spend so much time trying to create a season and stop a season and stuff like that, we haven't focused on the activity during the season. If you learn to focus on the activity during the season, then it makes the season bearable. In the sun, if you go out with a big old jacket on, guess what? It's going to be hotter than normal. If it's 99 degrees and you have a big old coat on, guess what's going to happen? You're going to sweat. Did everybody know that? I know I taught you something new today. Some of y'all are like, oh, I can't wear a trench coat. If you wear a trench coat and it's 99 degrees, everybody else is going to run from you. I just want to let you know. So, so here's the deal. Um, you can't change that. And God has a season for everything. And I want you to understand that what you do during the season can make, you e can make your life easier or harder. There's a time to be born and a time to die. Um, now, the, the funny thing about, of it, about it is that God has the last say on all of this stuff. He has the last say. And yet we try to do it on our own. Now, here's the thing. It says a time to be born and a time to die. Did you know that there's a time to die also? Yes. Some of us spend all of our lives trying to prevent death. Yes. Yes. Instead of praising God. Praising God will get you into the activity of preventing death. Yes. However, if you learn it, if you learn it from the right standpoint, if you learn it from the right standpoint, then you'll understand that it's just like that teacher in at Sparks Middle School, you know, in Nevada. Did anybody hear about that one? Yes. You know, this guy was a former soldier, did three tours overseas, three tours, could have been killed any of those times. But he comes back and retires and says, look, I'm finally done with that. I'm going to retire and live my life. And then a 12, 13, 14-year-old comes in there and shoots him. And so whether he tried to or not, he could not prevent his death. He, he came back from the, the worst situation in the world and gets taken out when he's free and clear of all of that. And so when God says there's a time to live and a time to die, you have to know that he creates the end at the beginning. He knows when you'll be born and he knows when you'll die. No matter how we do it in between, yes. he understands that. Mm -hmm. And so you've got to know, you've got to live for God. Living for God says, look, I'm going to do the best I can today. If I leave today, I'm going to do the best I can today. Tomorrow I'm not worried about. What does it say in the Bible? Don't worry about tomorrow. It'll have its own problems. Yes. Worry about today. Yes. You've got to be the best you can today. Look, if praise was taken away from you and you couldn't praise no more, would you think about today? How did you praise today? Did you do your best for God? Yeah. So you've got to always focus on doing your best. And so if the first thing it says, a time to be born and a time to die. Now, uh, I want you to understand you've got to love your children, love your family members today because uh, you, you can't control tomorrow. You can't control what happens tomorrow. Now, the next thing it says, it says a time to plant and a time to uproot. Now, some of us <laughs> have this backwards. Did you hear that? It says a time to plant and a time to uproot. 
Did y'all hear that? A time to plant and a time to uproot. Now, some of us have problems with this. Now, I, 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 I don't want you to raise your hands on this, but some of us have problems with planting and uprooting. Because some of us plant at the wrong time and some of us uproot at the wrong time. Let me help you out with this. Some of us plant ourselves in abusive relationships, but uproot ourselves from marriages with challenges. Can I get an amen this morning? We're quick to plant ourselves in this abuse. And then we stay with that person year after year after year. Mm -hmm. But then when we get in a marriage with challenges, we give more respect to the person who abused us versus the person yeah. who loves us. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Can I help y'all this morning? Stop looking at each other, family. <laughs> we know who you are. We know. Y'all see y'all. Y'all like... <laughs> we know. We know. But I'm trying to help you this morning. It's... And so, you know, we plant ourselves in abusive relationships and uproot ourselves. You look, I know because I, I, I've been in bad relationships. I spent seven years in one. I spent years and years in, in messing with those. How many people have spent years in bad relationships, bad situations? No, you, you're looking at it now. You say, man, I should have got out long. How many people said that? Yeah, when you say that, when you stretch long, you say, I should have got out long. How many people say long time ago? Long time ago. Long time ago, you know. <laughs> then you with somebody for two minutes and they sneeze and you're like, I'm gone. <laughs> I can't deal with you anymore. You can't know my last nerve. What's wrong with you? Oh, sneeze in front of me. You got some spit on me. I'm mad at you now. That's how we do it. Isn't that how we do it? We take what we had in that last relationship and bring it into the new one. Yeah. <laughs> we try to help y'all this morning. So there's a time to plan and a time to uproot. Now, look at this. I want you to write this down. You'll stick by the man who beats you but give up on the man who completes you. Isn't it crazy? Like, I love the way he hits me. No, you don't. Get away from him. But you uproot from somebody who, who you feel is weak because they praise God more than they abuse you or, or jump on you. They're not, they're not interested in touching you. They're interested in praising God. And because of that, you know, this man is weak. So you make the other one strong and you make the other one weak. You got it backwards. The, the one who's strong is the one who gives glory to God rather than yes. flesh. Yes. Oh, we got to get it somewhere. We got to yes. understand what's going on here. And so some of us plant ourselves in these bad relationships and do these bad things. And verse 3 says this. It says a time to kill and a time to heal. Oh, I'm trying to help y'all this morning. A time to kill. Look, it's not time to kill right now. Stop thinking about killing right now. But a time to kill and a time to heal. Sometimes, look. Sometimes we kill our children with our words while trying to heal an unrepairable situation. Mm -hmm. That's powerful. We, you, why are my children rebelling against me? Why doesn't my children love me anymore? Why doesn't my child respect me anymore? Why doesn't my child you know, uh, show the attention to me anymore? Because you still with that knucklehead. I'm trying to help y'all. Because you keep going back to him. Because he or she had to call the cops and you still got back with that person. Can I help y'all this morning? Some of y'all are like, he talking to me. How do you know it's my situation? I did. But God did. See, God brought you here this morning. You got to know. The spirit of you said, God, where are you? Here he is. He's all in your kitchen this morning. And some of us don't like it. You like burning eggs. You don't like what's going on right now. But you got to understand what's going on. you got to understand this. God wants you to see clearly yes. the things we think. He said his mind is higher than our minds. Yes. His ways are higher than our ways. He can't, we can't even think like him. Right. The closest we get to thinking like him is what Jesus said. Amen. And if you fail to realize that, then you fall, you, you fall short and you get yourself in situations like that. So it says the time to plant and the time to uproot. Now, time to kill, time to heal. It's, it, see, what you have to understand about this time to kill, time to heal stuff is you have control over it. You don't have control over the season, but you have control over your activity. You, you want your child to act right, do things right. You want your child to respect you, respect yourself. You say, God, you know, why are my child, why are my children rebelling? Why are they doing these things? Well, learn how to respect yourself first. You can't learn to love your children until you learn to love yourself. Can I help you this morning? And you have control over it. God, there's certain things that God has control over, and there's certain things that he gives you control over. Yes. The, the salvation was not your decision. It was his. You should be thankful for that. Yes. Amen. 
God chose you since the beginning of time. You should be thankful for that. Because some of us would be hanging on to hell right now. Some of us would have ourselves in deep, deep situations right now. Deep, deep situations. And so the... So... So these situations of time to kill, time to heal, we have control over them. And when we are it's still in the season, we spend too much time trying to change the season instead of trying to change our activity. You gotta learn how to change your activity in your situations. God has blessed you with eternal life. Can, can I get an amen for that? Can God get a clap for that? Can God get a clap for at least saving our sorry selves, giving us life, eternal life, uh, giving us the ability to know him, giving us the ability to experience his love. That is all the grace of God. And so you get excited about that. Now, so here's the thing. Verse 3 says also a time to tear down and a time to build up. There's another thing, a time to tear down and a time to build up. See, sometimes we're building up when we should be tearing down. Sometimes we're trying to keep folks we should be letting go of. You, you see what I'm saying? We spend more time trying to keep the wrong folks and, and, and letting go of the right folks. And So I want to go to verse 4. Verse 4 says this, a time to weep and a time to laugh. Uh-oh. A time to weep and a time to laugh. Look, we cry over people we should be laughing over. Come on. Some of us spent years in situations that we should have been laughing over. We spent years in situations, we cried, we cried, we cried, we bowed, we cried, we worshiped, we said, if you please come back, if you please allow, come back, please, please. How many people have done that? And am I the only one who's seen people experience that? <laughs> no time I said seen people experience that. See that? That was smooth, right? <laughs> so, look, a time to weep and a time to laugh. We shouldn't be crying over people we should be laughing over. Look, y'all remember that Gloria Gaynor song, I Will Survive? Y'all remember that? That's one of my favorite songs yeah. of all time. Even though I'm going to I'm like, I will survive. I'm going to walk straight into it. Y'all know it. Y'all know every time that song come on, man, you know you be, I will survive. <laughs> <laughs> y'all remember, remember the words? It took all the strength I had not to fall apart. You remember that? <laughs> Keep trying hard to mend the pieces of my broken heart. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> I spent oh so many nights just feeling sorry for oh my myself. <laughs> I used to cry, but now I hold my head up. I used to suck a pork. I don't know how to get it. You ain't mad to call them that suck a pork. Y'all know how we get? Uh, I don't say suck a pork though. It don't say that. Does it? But that's what you be feeling. Now I hold my hands up high. Get your, you know, that's what we are. <laughs> And so, you know, we, we learn these songs, but look, look, you have to know the spiritual side to that song. You have to know the rest they said. They said, what was the rest she said? She said, and you see me, somebody new. That's right. I'm not that chained up little person still in love with you. You see what I'm saying? How many years have we heard that song? God's trying to tell us, look, don't get caught up in them chains. Them chains are broken now. Don't get caught up. People may come back, but you a new person. What's the rest of it? And so you felt like dropping in and expect me to be free, but now I'm saving all my loving for someone who's loving me. That's what I'm talking about. I will survive. How many survivors do we have in here this morning? Look, you got to know that you're a survivor. Look, I take songs now, <laughs> and I make them mine to God. <laughs> I'm telling you, you hear that song come on, let the song come on with me in the car with you. You got pastor kicking the seat, me jumping around, because I don't care anymore. I love me some Jesus, and because I love Jesus, I'm willing to praise him. And I don't care what you say, you can see me spitting on myself, but I will survive. <laughs> Saving all my loving for someone who's loving me. Woo! You wrote it all. I wrote it all. Look, I was, I was dancing to them songs. Man, I love that song. That song, the words for that song, from that song tells about all the situations you've been through. Mm -hmm. Everything you've been put through. You used to think you weren't a survivor. You used to think you couldn't live without that person. You used to think you couldn't deal without them. You couldn't work without them. You couldn't go out and get your own job. You couldn't be successful without them. But I'm here to tell you that you could be successful.
successful without anybody Money. but Jesus. Yes. Yes. Only Jesus is the one who redeemed you. Right. He heals you when you're sick. He's yes. the one who was there with you when that person left you. Yes. 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 Woo. Yes. Woo. Yes. Verse 4. A time to weep and a time to laugh. Mm. Time to mourn and a time to dance. Look, this is time to dance. If that song comes on now, you're going to see it differently. <laughs> you say, that's the song Pastor was talking about. I'm about. The person going to be next to you and I'm like, what is he talking about? Why is she singing? Why is he singing? Why are they singing the song? <laughs> it's a time to mourn and a time to dance. Look, the chains are being broken off in Christ Jesus. God unplugs you from all the normal stuff. Amen. Mm -hmm. Normal is getting dressed and coming to church. But look around you. We got people in jeans. We got people in shorts. We got kids in fatigues. <laughs> Kids and fatigue, we'll, we'll talk about that later. But we got people with caps on, we got people in different, didn't speak different languages. You know why? You got all different colors in here. You know why? Because we all one family and we survived yeah, it through Christ yeah. Jesus yeah. and nobody else. Amen. I want you to read verse 5. Verse 5 says this a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them. Sometimes we're gathering the wrong stones, and sometimes we scatter the right ones. Yes. Matthew 21, 42 says this. Jesus said, the stones the builder reject has become the cornerstone. He's talking about himself. He said, everybody rejects me, but I'm the cornerstone. I am the one that holds the building up. And you got to know that every one of you are important, intricate parts of this building. All of y'all are important parts of Christ Jesus. Do y'all know that? He was the cornerstone. He holds us up. But we're the, the, the stones that go through and preach the word. We're the stones that tell other people about Jesus Christ. We're the stones that are excited. Sometimes your praise gets other people to praise. Yes. Sometimes you jumping up gets other people to jump up. Mm -hmm. They go, you go into the spirit and start jumping up and getting excited. And now they're like, man, I'm free too. I will survive. You know, they're excited. So you've got to learn that. God uses you as a stone to bring others, yes. to pull other people into his kingdom. Amen. And you have to know that. Yeah. And so Jesus holds us up. And you've got to know this. So you got to be the stone that God made you in. And, and you got to do the things that God has, has put for you to do. You, you, sometimes we spend our lives trying to fix things we can't fix. That's a season. You can't change seasons. And so I, I want to help you today. Sometimes you, you, you know, you're trying to fix things. How many people have been through situations? Say, man, I wonder when God's going to show up. Think about the, 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 you know, the person who's dealing with, you know, anxiety issues. Think about the person who's dealing with anger. Think about the person who's dealing with health issues. As a survivor, it is your duty to go and help other folks. Yeah. Yeah. It is your duty to tell people and make people excited about Christ. Yeah. It is your duty to praise, to worship, even when you don't feel like doing right. it. Yeah. It is your duty to play the proper music when people are around you yeah. so that they don't say, man, that person ain't saved. They still playing that rap music. Yeah. They still playing that music with the cursing and all that other stuff. Mm -hmm. How can you say I'm hungry for God but still be hungry for the flesh? Yes. You see, you can't be hungry for both. You either accept one and deny the other, or you accept the other and deny the other. And so it's time for us to be the, 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 the pebbles for Christ. Be the stone. Be the new creation. Let the old be passed away and change your activity towards the new. Look, if I, if I could do it again, you, you know, think about what happened yesterday to you. There are things that you looked at and said, man, if I could do that again. How many people have been through relationships where you said, if I could do that again, oh, it would be totally different. Yes. Yes. I would have got out a long time ago. It would have lasted two minutes instead of 20 years. Mm -hmm. Well, God is not giving that memory for you to want to go back. He's giving that memory for your future. Yes. For when you help others, yeah. when you talk to others, you've got to be the stone to help them through their situations. Yes. Verse 6 says this, a time to search and a time to give up. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, a time to search and a time to give up. Did anybody know that there's a different time? There's a time to search and a time to give up. Look, I'm, I'm going to help you all with this. I found my wife when I stopped looking for her. Some of y'all going to get that on the way home. Yes. I found my wife when I stopped looking for her. When I was looking for her, I found a bunch of knuckleheads. 
Knucklehead qualifications? Anybody? Anybody found knuckleheads before? Anybody have some access? Yeah. As long as they're not watching this video. <laughs> I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about the other ones. <laughs> Y'all remember that? Y'all know everybody. Who has had knuckleheads? Raise your hand yeah. if you've had some knuckleheads before. We're not talking about the person you're with now. <laughs> but be careful when you raise your hand. There goes the pin. Look, they give her kisses now. Like, no, baby, I'm not talking about you. <laughs> <laughs> so you gotta know, you gotta know how to do this. Time to search and the time to give up. Look, I didn't find her till I stopped. I'm trying to help y'all this morning. Sometimes the things you're looking for will come to you when you stop looking for them. That's right. That's right. God says anything you put before me is a God. Mm -hmm. And you gotta say, you gotta uh, uh, look at your life and say, God, show me the rights and the wrongs of my life. Sometimes you don't like it. That's right. Because it is it, cleverly disguised as your relationship. He'll tear it away, and then you you run towards another one. You say, God, help me. Help me to be better. And then he'll, you'll run to another relationship. He'll tear that up and you know, run to another relationship. God, man, why are these people rejecting me? They're not rejecting you. God is helping you. Yes. And because you're not listening and looking, you're seeing it as I can't get anybody. And say, God said, look, if you stop, I give you somebody. But the somebodies you're getting right now are nobody. That's right. <laughs> How many people getting it this morning? Yes. Oh. So, it's a time to search and a time to, to give up. Some of the things you're looking for from God, you'll get when you stay out of his way. Did you know that? Yeah. Sometimes we get in God's way. Like, God, bring me somebody. Oh, that must be them. They look good. They smell good. They act good. But all their insides is tore up. That's right. And when you get around them, they're like nice as can be. But then they start abusing you. Because you chose them and didn't allow God to choose them for you. Amen. You know when you when you know God is working in your life, how many people you've been in your life had multiple relationships, then you finally say, I am done. Yes. How many people said that before? Amen. And then you find who you're looking for. That's right. Come on. <laughs> That's what happens. Yes. When you finally give it up and give it to God. A lot yeah. of times we step in God's way, like like uh, and get in his way like Abraham did and got in his way and said, Yeah, Abraham, God said, Abraham, you're gonna have a child. I didn't say to get in your get in your own way and go and do it yourself. I'm telling you, you don't have one. You don't have to worry about it. It's gonna come. And so God is telling you things. He has promises in this Bible for every one of you. <clears throat> but sometimes we get in his way. And we we uh, we, we we lock up. We chain ourselves up to the enemy. And we think God is going to bring me a husband. I've been looking for a husband for the last three years. He's going to bring me one now. I know he's going to give me one now. I'm going to church to find one. Look, you looking good. You smell good. He act good. He got a good bank account. I'm going to him. You go to him because he's in church and then he ends up just as bad as the people you've been dealing with for years. Yeah. The thing is, if you're saying, God, give me this. Give me a husband. Give me a wife. This is what he's going to do. He's going to sit you down. And when he sits you down, you say, man, maybe I need to be looking for one. I'm getting older. How many people said that before? I'm getting older. I don't know. I don't know if I'll be able to find somebody. Good, because you're not supposed to find them. God will find them for you. Yes. And the funny thing is, he already had it. See, I realized that God had my wife in plan before I even said I wasn't going to look for one anymore. Did you really, Do you understand that? Yes. And so God shows you later, man. He shows you, man, I had that in plan before you even, you know, cried over somebody. I knew what I was going to do for you. So I'm telling you, let God handle your situation. Yes. Give him all the glory yes. and the honor. When you marry somebody, marry Christ because everybody else will uh, uh, upset you. Everybody else yes. will do you wrong. Yes. Everybody else will make your heart seem great and then destroy it. Yes. Some people will roll you in the dirt. Think about it. Why do they have a thing called court for divorces? Because the same people who were mushy, mushy, giving kisses, going to different cities to change a flat for somebody, or now won't even won't even open a cereal box for you anymore. <laughs> they open it, pour it on the floor because they don't care. Uh, people want to. He ain't gonna drive my car. Drive my, I want the car, the house, sir. You got 20 TVs. I want 21. <laughs> Uh, you got two houses. I want three. I want to take them all. I don't want her to have anything. Isn't that how we get? So the best thing for you to do is to allow God to work in your life. Yeah. Look, people will upset you. People will do you wrong. People will say they love you and then throw you to the wolves. But God will always be there for you. He is the one who is there for you when you're in the high, when you're on your low, when you're crying and cursing and saying bad things. 
things about God. Where are you, God? He says, I'm right here. He's with you, listening to everything you're saying. He's with you when you cry. He's with you when you get up. He's with you when you go to sleep. When you're going through an ailment in your life, He's with you. Everybody else will leave you. Come on, yes. God will never fail you. And so I'm telling you, some of the things you're looking for, you won't get until you get out of the way of God. And then it says a time, <laughs> a time to be silent, verse seven. A time to be silent and a time to speak. <clears throat> I'll be silent on that one. I'm just going to leave that one to y'all to let that <laughs> marinate in your heads. Maybe you'll get that. Uh, God will reveal that one to you. I'm, I'm done with that one. I am not gonna, we might have people fighting when I finish with that one. Verse 8 says, a time to love and a time to hate. Oh, my goodness. The Bible says love the sinner, hate the sin. It says love it. Hate the, you, you love the person. You're supposed to love everybody. You're not supposed to hate. You, the only thing you're supposed to hate is evil because that's the opposite of God. Yes. Right. But we learn to hate people. Like, I can't stand her. She wear that hair like that every day. I can't stand them shoes she always wearing. I can't stand the way that person smells. I can't stand the, the way they don't cut their yard. I can't stand the way they don't wash their car. I can't stand the way their kids look. We got a thousand reasons to hate people. And those are the things that lock chains back up to us. We're supposed to be free in Jesus. Now, I want you to understand this. We have to stop trying to change the seasons and learn how to change the activity in your life. You cannot change the season. When it's sunny, it's sunny. When it's hot, it's hot. And I'm using the natural to the spiritual. The natural is when it's hot. How many people, how silly would it look getting up and trying to change the sun? I, I'm going to change this sun today. It's going to stop. It's going to be cold today. Hold on, y'all. I got it. I got it figured out. <laughs> people do that. How silly does that look in the natural? It's just as silly as you trying to change your condition without changing your activity. You've got to change your activity. Don't complain about the rain when you were warned about it and you knew it was about to rain. It's like the news forecast will say, it's going to rain today. And we go to the park and we're mad because it's raining. <laughs> what, what, what's up with it? Why did it start raining? Because he said it was going to rain today. So what I'm telling you is in your lives, there are seasons you go through that God puts you through. You can't change the season, but you can change your activity. Stop being mad at the situations in your life. Look at, if you can rewind from where you're at now, you went through all that divorce, you went through that bad situation in your life, you went through those issues with your child, but you're still here today. You're still sanctified and full of the Holy Spirit. You're still raising your hands and praising to God. You're still giving glory and honor for the things he's given you. So those things, while as bad as they may look, they still completed you in Christ. So stop looking at your situation and saying, man, oh, this is the worst thing that could ever happen to me. Because tomorrow you'll still be here. And so I say this. Ephesians 1 4 says that God chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight mm -hmm. Look he chose you before he predestined you to know him Some of us think oh, I decided to know Jesus. No, you didn't decide to know Jesus Jesus decided to know you and it was before you were even on this earth So stop condemning yourselves for the things you've done in your life This is the time you shift and change your life for Christ this is the time you stop looking at and saying, I'm not worthy, and said, you, your worthiness wasn't based on anything you've done in your life. Your worthiness was based before the creation of time, before the creation of this world. So give honor and glory to God for every single thing that happens in your life. From this day forward, walk and remember that you are a survivor. Remember and understand this. It's God's time. It's always God's time, but it's your activity. Always God's time. But it's your activity. If you've been blessed in the house, give God glory. Amen.